Hello, I'm Mark Singer with XL4. We're going to be demonstrating our vehicle uh, networking platform and OTA solution. Uh, we're going to see several portions to the video. First, we're going to describe the networking solution that we have here now. Uh, then we're going to describe the components that we will be doing an OTA up to, update to. Then we will actually do that OTA update and look at those components that have been updated and how their behaviors have changed. Looking at the network of the car, the backbone is a one gigabit ethernet link. Our one gigabit ethernet link is on automotive grade ethernet cable. And in this particular demo, we have a 15 meter long automotive grade ethernet cable that we're using, just to help you understand that this really is designed with the automotive network market uh, and environment in mind. The backbone has multiple switches on it. These switches serve as gateways to many subnets. So we have the one gigabit backbone, but we have multiple hundred megabit devices that may be plugged in that will be aggregated onto that one gigabit backbone. It also it serves as the gateway to non-Ethernet devices and subnetworks. In this case, we have an ECU. This is an AutoSAR-based ECU, which is on a CAN bus and the CAN bus is introduced into the Ethernet environment through this gateway switch. In this particular case of this ECU, we've configured it to be operating as if it were a tire pressure system. Other devices we have on this portion of the network, we have our smart antenna. The smart antenna provides in one device the cellular interface, the Wi-Fi interface, Bluetooth for the vehicle, AM FM radio, uh, satellite uh, navigation, and includes sufficient processing resources and memory to serve as the gateway to the vehicle. Uh, and, and we'll come back to why we like that in a few moments. This is on the Ethernet, a 100 megabit Ethernet link. We have cameras, other devices. Here we have a camera for the rear facing aspects of the car. This is a 100 megabit ethernet link. This is power over data line. So we have no other connection necessary for the camera. And it's a uh, twisted pair unshielded. So a very nice economical low cost cabling system. Moving towards the front of the vehicle, our gigabit ethernet link brings us to a front uh, gateway. We have our front camera. The gigabit link runs all the way into the head unit as well. This head unit running uh, Linux, but this solution set is portable across multiple operating systems. And then in this case, we also have a media module. This media module uh, produced by Molex, this is the engineering version. The production form factor, nice and small, but for our engineering development purposes, we like a little bit more room to work. We have implemented in this demo, this device on a USB bus. To the head unit. It is designed for and works well as an Ethernet peripheral, but we want to show the ability for the over-the-air update to cross multiple networks, so we're demonstrating it here on, on USB just to give us one more network interface to cross as we do our over-the-air updates. So let's take a look at some of the functionality of the system as it's now configured. On the head unit, we can see our forward camera. We can see our rear view camera. We have a parking assist overlay. This is processed in the camera itself and presented as a single image for display rendering on the head unit. This camera is a 1280 by 960 resolution 
and it's running on a 100 megabit Ethernet link. The compression, video compression, is taking place in the camera. This is an H.264 compression, but in the automotive environment, latency is a big concern, so we're not doing intra-frame compression, we're doing all keyframe. What that means is we don't need to accumulate some number of frames before we do the compression, so we don't have the time delay of putting 6, 8, 10, 12 frames in place before we process the compression. It's an Ethernet AVB TSN line. This gives us guaranteed bandwidth and guaranteed latency over the internet for the video feed. In the automotive market, you often want to do uh, some evaluations of the video, and image processing tasks are best performed <coughs> on uncompressed video. So in this environment, we do the basic image processing uh, components in the camera prior to compression. Things such as edge detection, object detection, uh, motion detection, uh, these things are done on the raw video before it is compressed. And in the network, we have two virtual channels. We're sending the video and we're sending the metadata, and these are synchronized with timestamp so that the higher level image processing tasks whether it be uh, cross-traffic warning, or lane drift warning, or uh, drowsy uh, uh, conclusion of drowsy driver warning, these higher level tasks can be performed anywhere in the system with the basic image processing information of edge detection, object detection and tracking, motion detection, all present for those decisions to be made. We have a media module here we looked at, and I'm going to demonstrate a little bit of the functionality of the media module. In this case, we have an Android phone. I'm going to plug that Android phone in, and we're going to see the Android Auto application at work. This is going to bring up an app on the phone. We have an app on the phone which is called TuneIn Radio. And this allows me to tune in to my favorite South Bay radio station on my head unit on the, the car from my Android phone. And you can see here on the phone the application, the tune in radio phone application running and playing K Bay, the South Bay soft rock station. However, I'm going to show you a shortcoming in this unit because now I'm going to take an Apple iPhone and plug it in. And we can see that the iPhone has hooked up to the USB. It's getting power, it's charging, but I have no Apple iPhone function on my head unit. There is an Apple application called CarPlay, but I don't have that application on this system and so I cannot play the content from my car. This is actually a concern of the automakers that they will ship a car into the market and then at some subsequent time some new feature will come into the market a new phone, a new application and the consumer will anticipate that the car they bought in 2014 can now work with the phone that was introduced into the market in 2016 and come back to the dealer with the complaint that their car doesn't work properly if they can't use their phone in their car. So over-the-air updating is one of the mechanisms by which these types of concerns to keep the product current in the market even after a ship date can be addressed. And I will be doing an update to this system to install the Apple CarPlay and we'll have the opportunity to see that at work after we've done the over-the-air update. Other things I want to do in the over-the-air update we had looked at the front camera and its function. You may have noticed the fisheye lens effect. So perhaps I would like to resolve that as well. So I will download software to do a D fisheye in the camera so that we have a better view from the front camera. And then I will also download a new user interface to this ECU. This ECU is functioning as a tire pressure monitor. When I check the pressure of individual tires, it gives me the symbol of an exclamation point 
to indicate to me that those tires are function are correctly inflated. The problem is, we thought that was a good thing. Look, there's a, an exclamation point. But the consumer perceives an exclamation point often as a warning symbol. And we had intended that symbol to indicate good status. So now we want to update that so that we use a different symbol for good status. And we'll do that through the over-the-air update as well. So now let's go to the creation of the over-the-air update campaign. So I've got my campaign for the over-the-air update all created. This gives me a summary review of the campaign, and now I'm ready and I'm going to deploy my campaign to upgrade my system. So the campaign is now pending, and it's in process of updating my system. So as this system upgrades, we'll be able to see on the diagnostic screen here an indication that the ECU is being reprogrammed. There we have. It's now begun and it is reprogramming. So we're getting a new flash to this AutoSAR ECU on the CAN bus. That now complete. So now when I check the tire pressure status, I'm getting a different symbol. So our update has completed. Now I'm going to plug in my iPhone again we have CarPlay enabled. So from our iPhone, from our head unit, we can control our iPhone and enjoy the applications and the content that we have on the iPhone. And we also have done fisheye reduction in the camera. So where the lens in the past was giving us a fisheye image, we're now doing a fisheye reduction algorithm that's been loaded into the camera. So in this process, we have brought in our update over the smart antenna, security profiled at the smart antenna to ensure no unauthorized intrusion. That content has then come into the network. The update agent has updated a CAN device. We have updated an Ethernet device and we have updated a device that is connected over USB. Three separate networks, one step for us to create and distribute those three separate upgrades to the vehicle.